Next talk will be from Dr. Arti Heda and she is the brain behind this uh, this session. She has planned most of the talks and she is going to talk about robotic oncular surgery. Is it the future? Uh, so good morning everyone. Uh, we've been talking about technology since morning. So I'll take you all to a step forward. So uh, let me ask one question to our panelists and the audience. How many of you think that there is a future for robotic ocular surgery? Okay, let's say 50% of the people in the hall say that there is a future. So I would like to thank UOC and AIOS for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, these are the disclaimers of my presentation. I generally don't give it, but you are not allowed to sleep in my uh, talk. Uh, you are not allowed to look in your phone and you are not allowed to leave the hall because this might be a little boring, the little theoretical, but I really can't help it. And uh, one more thing, I have not used any AI or chat GPT to create this presentation. So bear it with me. Uh, it's human nature to strive for perfection. May it be uh, making chapatis or doing surgeries. Uh, nevertheless, manual surgical procedures are constrained by the physiologic limitation of human surgeons. Uh, precise physical manipulation of intraocular tissue is hindered by inherited hand tremors and inability to sense forces between these <coughs> human tactile perception and lack of sufficient depth perception to resolve microstructures or identify the tissue planes. So robotic systems have been widely incorporated into many surgical applications because of their higher precision, greater maneuverability and potential for improved sensing capabilities compared with the manually performed surgical procedures. So ophthalmology is one of the uh, most enriched fields allowing the domain of artificial intelligence to be part of its point of interest in scientific research. <coughs> so let's see, try to understand how robots are part of ophthalmology. So these next three, four slides are very theoretical, but uh, we will have to understand that why, uh, uh, why and how are robots going to be part of ophthalmology are already part of ophthalmology. One method to categorize the range of intraocular robotic surgical system is according to the degree of human versus robotic control. So in traditional surgery, the human surgeon controls a surgical tool and uses an optical microscope as visual feedback. So we all know this. In robot assisted tool, the surgical tool itself is modified to a miniature robotic system. The surgeon controls this tool to perform a hands-on surgical procedure while the robot tool uh, offers tremor cancellation, depth locking and other features. So uh, example of this is Micron. In Teleoperated robotic surgery, the surgeon controls a robotic system through joysticks and uses an optical microscope or digital heads up display as visual feedback. The joystick motion is directly mapped to robotic motion and therefore advantages such as uh, haptic feedback, tremor filtering and motion cancel, uh, scaling can be implemented very easily. Then is the uh, cooperative robotic system, the surgeon holds the control, the surgical tool simultaneously with the robotic system and uses a microscope or let's say an OCT as visual feedback. The surgeon maintains direct manual control over the motion of the surgical tool while the robot system provides assistive compensation for hand tremors and allows for prolonged immobilization of the surgical tool. So finally, in a partially or fully automated system, the robotic system is tightly integrated with the microscope to provide feedback and guidance to the motion commands of the robotic system, which directly holds and operates the surgical tool. So specific procedure or steps of a procedure are automatically performed by the robotic system while the surgeon supervises through the provided visual feedback. Uh, now let's talk about the practice. So now you can relax. The theoretical part of it is over. Uh, now let's talk, talk about applications for surgical robotics in ophthalmology. Laser-based surgical procedures such as femto laser cataract surgery has already provided superhuman level of accuracy and safety to lower intra-op and post-op complication rates. In addition, microscope integrated OCT have enabled improved visualization and introduced the ability to accurately sense depth during the surgical procedures through incorporation of a real-time OCT. By standardizing the treatment, a robotic system could enable every surgeon 
to improve the outcome and the uh, another potential uh, future benefit is reducing posterior capsular opacification through complete polishing of the entire capsular bag currently human surgeons are limited by an inability to visualize the lens equator the difficulty of sensing the position of the posterior capsule relative to the tool <coughs> and inadequate control of aspiration forces and response time so robotic solutions include the incorporation of noble visualization technologies capable of imaging the capsule equator robotically guiding the tool positioning and high resolution control of aspiration forces with fast response time so there have been multiple studies and they have uh, they have proved a good role of robot in cataract surgery in animal models so robotic surgery play a role in every subspeciality in ophthalmology so retina is another subspeciality where, the, where uh, robots have played a very big role so role played there have been gene and stem cell therapy ma macular surgeries uh, giving sub retinal injections retinal vein canalizations so there have been various studies on the animal models in this regard as well various glaucoma procedures have also been performed by robots like guniotomy and eye stent surgeries some of these steps have been done by human and some by the robots so let me just tell you some points wherein we we can say that robots do have a future the uh, routine surgeons could actually help in, uh, the robotic surgeon could help increase the healthcare access by performing routine surgery on patients with cataracts that are not complex seamless uh, integration of all surgical steps into a single system could improve surgical flow and decrease the operation time robotic cataract surgery is well suited to automation because surgical protocol is remarkably consistent and comprises the same specific routine task so technology could be used to reach more learners evolving from one to one and one to many students so of course nothing uh, can have uh, not everything will have positive impact so there are some points which uh, which will make us think whether ro robot will be a future or not like the uh, they come with a huge cost to put a robot in your theater you need big amount of space uh, the surgical time might be increased in the initial phases there will be always a risk of infection there is steep learning curve and there can be device malfunction as well so i'll leave you with this thought that change is always essential we definitely have to change so um, i hope people those who are not raising their hands before my talk will now be convinced that robot definitely will have some role to play in future when it comes to ophthalmology thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you so much ma'am and um, uh, actually yeah, uh, what we think we will employ uh, for thank you sir uh, thank you so uh, what we usually say like you said uh, it will be employed mostly in the routine cases so in the routine cases uh, we can hand over the uh, surgery to uh, to robot and somebody will be supervising and the, we we will think that the uh, it is a smooth sailing ship but uh, we uh, tend to forget that there is one human element that we can't el uh, eliminate is the patient the patient factor will always be there there are cases which seem routine and sometimes there will be uh, uh, pr uh, the patient might move and there uh, cause a pcr everything is going uh, good and then suddenly a pcr happens then will a uh, robot that has been trained to do a routine cataract surgery will able to save the day or uh, uh, will there be a provision for some human to step in in that system because that that system and there won't be any microscope or somebody just to immediately step in and take 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 it over so how do you feel about it so um, the robots are fed su in such a way that they will not have any complication and if there is and uh, there is a, even a single sign that there can be a complication or let's say robot has caught the posterior capsule the machine will stop it will not move further so that's what so let's say a junior is operating and a robot is operating you can definitely re rely on a robot more than junior because junior will not know when to stop but robot will definitely know when to stop it's not that we are giving everything in robots and we and we are we are sitting with coffee uh, in our room and robot is operating in the theater it is not going to happen that way robots are not here to replace us they are here to help us so we may have to decide that these cases 
uh, we can say that that can be safely done. That does not mean that you don't have to be around. And we know that these cases definitely will. And it is still evolving. So there have been some incidents like 10 years back uh, in uh, orthopedics that uh, the patient had to lose both her knees because it was getting operated by a robot and they were not able to uh, intervene in between. And uh, then they, people thought that it might not have any role. But then again, they made some changes and it does have a ro uh, role in knee surgery now. So it is still evolving, but we can definitely say that it will have a role. How much and how we still don't know. Uh, you know, uh, when I was reading up for this, uh, ma'am has covered uh, the maximum part. See, removal of epiretinal membrane has been done, actually done. Uh, there are three cases in human eyes where subretinal injections were given by the robot. So you can definitely, as ma'am said, you cannot, uh, robot can, you know, help in like corneal refination can be done. Uh, by the re robot. So, of course, it has to be taken over by the surgeon. So, a part will be done by the robot. So, it is going to make it easier and uh, there's also an audio uh, feedback that you get in the robot. Mm. So, they'll keep on telling you, they gi uh, give you that feedback that where you're going, the depth level, depth perception that we probably won't be able to understand. So, that actually reduces that it's been seen that it's, it's published that 50% mm. chances of PCRs have gone down with the robots yeah. being there. So, uh, like the earlier model, uh, Da Vinci was trained when uh, where there was actually a surgeon who was handling the movements and it was just somebody eliminating the tremor. And then uh, they started removing the human intervention altogether, as you said, and there was no like there was no provision for somebody to step in. So probably the future models will have some a provision where somebody can step in and save the day if some something happens. I think that will be the way forward. That way we can take uh, because uh, it will be a boon if it comes in a setup like us where we can employ uh, uh, a uh, robot to operate throughout the day and somebody just can take over uh, just the supervision part then a lot of un unmet need of cataract at actually can can be treated and we can reduce the disease burden, burden in coming there days. There was a huge discussion the other day uh, on that that let's say if a surgeon himself has too many tremors will he be able to uh, operate the robot you know <laughs> so so what's the point so we say, keep on saying that you know tremors will be reduced with the help of robots. So, probably they are designed in such a way that a particular amount of movement is allowed and beyond this it won't be allowed. So, somebody who is shaking a lot, it is, it is definitely... It is, just like, it is just like a, a camera gimbal where even if you are shaking your hand, the camera becomes stable, stable. If, when you are moving. So, it, it becomes something like that based on gyroscopes. So, uh, Dr. Abu uh, is here. I think he, he, he has got some other engagement and is not here. So that uh, uh, brings us to the end of the session. It was a very nice session and uh, thank you everybody for attending. I would like to invite all the UOC members to come on the stage so we can have a group photograph.